Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ya Ali Salaam. Ya Ali Salaam. Ya Ali Falaam. Ya Ali Falaam. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. بين that this is the first khutbah that I'm giving. In this new Gregorian calendar of 2017, the first khutbah that I'll be given since the refurbishment of the masjid here at Green Lane, I don't see any subject more important than the subject that I want to advise everybody here in the community concerning it, to begin to evaluate ourselves and to try to address this issue if we find that there is some type of lackness, that there is some type of falling short of the mark in our application of this issue, especially when we look at and we consider and contemplate the many ayat of the Quran to tell us to be on the opposite of this particular issue that has become the norm today. In Surah Al-Hadid, Allah puts forth a question to this community, to this ummah, each and every individual, there is a question that on a day like this, Yom al a person should think seriously about its reality. Because it is something that has happened to Bani Israel from the Yahud and the Nasara. And it's something that has happened to our Ummah. And it's only going to get worse before it gets better, except for those individuals that Allah Ta'ala divinely protects him. That ayat in Surah Al-Hadid Hadid is the statement, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمِدَ فَقَصَدْ قُلُوبَهُمْ وَكَثِيرُ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Allah puts this question to everybody here. Has the time not come? For those people who truly believe in Allah, that their hearts should become fearful as a result of the remembrance of Allah, as, as a result of what has been revealed from the truth, the Quran. 
and that they should not be like those people who preceded them from Ahlul Kitab, who a long period had passed them when they didn't consider the books that were revealed to them respectively, the Quran, the Torah, the Injil, the Zabur of Dawood, and so forth and so on. As a result of not engaging in those books and what was revealed to them from the truth, their hearts became hard and they became diseased. And as a result of that, many of them were fasiqun. That's an ayat of the Quran. If anybody goes back and he reads the tafsir of that ayat, he'll find a lot of amazing issues connected to that ayat as it relates to the, st the statements and the actions and the incidents that transpired with the righteous predecessors from this ummah. Some of them, when they heard this ayat, after being criminals, hearing that ayat in the middle of partaking in a criminal act, the person realized he's messing about. So he made toba to Allah as a result of this one ayat, and he abandoned the criminality that he was engaged in. Go back and read the tafsir of the ayat. But I want to bring the ayat to your attention, the kalam of Allah Azza wa Jal, the question Allah took the time out, so to speak, and he's asking everybody this question. Hasn't the time come for those who truly believe, for their hearts to become fearful as it relates to the dhikr of Allah and what was revealed from the truth, meaning the Quran? The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ikhwani, it is the rope of Allah that extends from the heavens to the earth. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised this community and he advised and commanded everyone from amongst us, hold on to the rope of Allah. And that rope of Allah is his Quran. As an individual, as families, as couples, as a community and so forth and so on. The culture right now, the popular culture that we're living in, day by day, our Islamic identity is being eroded away little by little despite whatever efforts you try to put forward. The only efforts that will allow and enable an individual to be successful are those efforts that are divinely backed by the Kitab and the Sunnah. Popular culture today is a problem. It's a serious issue. So the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the top of the list with what is inside of it in terms of knowledge and treasures, who Allah is, who Allah isn't, what he told you to do, what he told you not to do, the simple contemplation and holding on to that Quran, like as I saw coming out. Popular culture today, everybody has a smartphone right now. So the smartphone has become a part of our lives. So we find people today in our masjid, their smartphones are out and they use it in a positive way and that they're reading Surah Al-Kaf on this day. But they're the minority of the people. They're the minority of the people. What happened to Bani Israel? Some of them stayed connected to the book that was revealed to them, but the vast majority of them abandoned it in some shape, some form, or some fashion. So as that ayat of the Quran mentioned, the Prophet will come, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and many of us who want to practice his birthday, many of us who consider ourselves upon his sunnah, many of us who have jealousy and who have hirs and ghira, we want to be on the sunnah. But that statement, I want to be on the sunnah and I want to be from the sunnah and give dawah to the sunnah, but at the same time, I'm detached from the book of Allah. So he will come, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Allah mentioned, وَقَرَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هذا القرآن مهجورا. He will complain that my community have abandoned this Quran. Amr, Bakr, Zayd, they abandoned this Quran in the different ways that they exist, different categories. Even those people who are practicing, not just the people who come who don't come to Juma and they don't pray. The Muslims who are practicing and wearing good hijab and trying to do the right thing. Where does the Quran play a role in his life? So the meaning of abandoning the Qur'an, it means many things. We talked about some of them in this masjid in the past. It means many things from what abandoning the Qur'an is. And if the Muslims had the ta'zim of the Qur'an in reality, this one issue would be something that we would be applying on a daily basis. Because there's not a single person except that he's suffering from the problem or he knows someone close to him suffering from it. And abandoning the Qur'an is... 
abandoning making it tadawi with the Quran. That the person doesn't take the Quran in order to deal with the sicknesses and the ailments that befall him. In this row, the second row, the third row, all the way to the back. The first row of the women, all the way to the back. I don't say one person, two or three, but you look in each and every row, half of the row is suffering from some, some ailment, some problem. More than half of the row. There's not a row in this masjid except that people, not a person, people in each and every row, they have some mental or physical physical problem that the Quran has the ability to deal with. Our Nabi, our Rasul and Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walked into the home of our mother Aisha who was sick. He found with Aisha a lady trying to help her overcome her sickness bi ibnillah. The hadith Aisha narrated didn't specify what the problem was but when the Prophet came in sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he told the lady Ali jiha bi kitabillah Instead of doing what you're doing, try to make her well by doing the recitation of the Quran, by doing the ruqya. It is possible that our mother Aisha, like most women or many women, suffer from their monthly cycles, the monthly period. Akramakumullah. It happened when she performed Hajj and she was crying when her period came. Brother Muhammad said, What's the matter? She said, My period came. He told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's the sunnah of Allah and Adam's daughter. This is natural. Don't worry about that. Everything that transpires in terms of the way you act, the way you feel, what's going on with you physically, all of that is from the sunnah of Allah and the daughters of Adam. There's nothing wrong with that. Allah mentioned it in the Quran. Yes'alunaka anal maheed. Qul huwa adha fa'tazilu nisa fil maheed. They ask you, ya Muhammad, because I don't want anyone in the masjid coming with some false sense of high level of taqwa and say this man is mentioning the woman's period on the member. The Quran said, Ya Muhammad, your companions ask you about the woman's cycle, a period. Tell them her period is a hurt, it's a harm. Maybe that was what was befalling Aisha. The Prophet told the lady, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make her well and give her shifa by reading the Quran. As you all know, Aisha said that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his khuluq was the Qur'an. When you saw him, the way he acted, the way he behaved, you saw in essence the Qur'an. He was only practicing what Allah revealed. So as it relates to his sabr, as it relates to his being serious, as it relates to his seriousness, as it relates to his knowledge, as it relates to him dealing with people in a good way, all of that was an embodiment and manifestation of the Qur'an. Him telling the woman, make her well by the Quran, the Kitab of Allah, that's applying the Quran. Allah mentioned in the Quran, Ya ayyuha nas, qad ja'atkum mu'idhatum min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima fi sudur. Oh, you believe? There has come to you a book from your Lord, and that book is a shifa for what is ever in the heart. We have diseases in our hearts, and from those diseases, Depression, anxiety, anger management issues, arrogance, laziness, wiswas, overthinking. People have all kinds of issues. But does he go back to the book of Allah that said it was a shifa for what was in the heart? In the Quran is that which is a shifa and a rahma for those who believe. So abandoning the Quran, ikhwani, is the fact that if the people of this ummah really believed in the Quran, really, that is the kalam of Allah, they would follow the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his statements. There was not a night that went by except Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did ruqya upon himself every night with the book of Allah. Where he read the last three surahs of the Quran. Is that the sunnah and the practice of the average Hamad, Bakr, and Zaid from the people? Everybody has some kind of issue. A problem in his chest, in his heart. Some sickness, overthinking, wiswise, anxiety, depression. All kinds of issues. Did he ever do ruqya on the Quran? With the Quran in the daytime, in the nighttime? It's an abandonment of the Quran. 
I gave a khutbah here a long time ago about the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri in which he read Surah al-Fatiha on a man that had been bitten by a poisonous snake. The man was dying from the poison of the snake. Sayyid Abu Sa'id al-Khudri read on him Surah al-Fatiha, a surah that everybody knows. Not a single person here doesn't know Surah al-Fatiha. He read over him Surah al-Fatiha seven times, and by Allah's permission, that ruqya and recitation took away that disease and that imminent death that he was expecting to have happen to him. So no one is sitting here with poison of a snake running in his bloodstream. By the time the khutbah al-jum is done, he's dead. No one has that issue. He has the issue of a slow death. He has different things going on. He's been told, you're going to die a slow death because this disease kills. Be even in that. Let him go back to the book of Allah for his arthritis. Let him go back to the book of Allah for his flu. Let him go back to the book of Allah for his cold. Let him go back to the book of Allah for his eczema or whatever it is. Not referring back to the book of Allah collectively is what happened to Bani Israel. Because it's a sign of Killatul Iman, Da'ful Iman. His faith is weak. Instead of reading the Quran, he takes medicine. And we're not saying here it's not permissible to take medicine. We're saying that the Quran is free and everybody knows Surah Al Fatiha. So if Surah Al Fatiha can cure a man that had been bitten by a poisonous snake, then compare that to your issue. In addition to that, Ikhwani, abandoning the book of Allah in the culture which we live in right now is not judging our affairs, our lives, our disagreements, our understandings by the book of Allah, what they call it tahakum ila kitabillah. The Muslim has a religious responsibility not to put anything over the book of Allah or over the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu No matter what society is saying to him, and no matter what the people of society are saying to him, it's the sign of the true believer, the true believing man or the true believing woman. We have in the popular culture, the elders doing their own thing, and examples of the youngsters doing their own thing as it relates to judging ourselves, our issues, our understandings, our actions by the book of Allah. We have this problem manifested with the elders, we have it with the youngsters, with the men, with the women, with the Arabs, with the non-Arabs. It's just a condition of our ummah, of what happened to Bani Israel has happened to us. I'll give you an example. With what happened a few days after doing the inauguration of the president in America, they had a march on Washington that was organized by a number of women groups. There were groups of feminists and other than that. So they came out in solidarity in order to show they were not happy with this bigot being chosen as the leader of America. That's not the issue right now. The issue are the Muslim women who participated and who got up and spoke. The Muslim lady who is from Palestinian origin and her people, our brothers in Palestine, are oppressed and they're looking for a voice so that the world can hear and come to know about their oppression. But does the Quran and the Sunnah allow the Muslim woman to get up there and to be in front of tens of thousands of people screaming at the top of her lungs the way I'm screaming right now in order to bring attention to a situation? Let us judge that issue by the book of Allah and not based upon our emotions. There was an African-American woman, Muslim lady, who got up to do the same thing, to add her voice to the voice of lesbians, to the voice of transvestites, to the voice of all kinds of criminals, and to the voice of some good people as well. The African-American lady got up, and she started speaking on behalf of the plight of the poor African-Americans in America. And she mentioned some positive personalities of the past and some criminals that she said she stood on her shoulders. As an African-American who's sensitive to what happens to my people in America, when I look at that lady, because she's African-American, do I say what she did is okay? Just because it goes along with my desires. I have to judge that by the book of Allah. I have to judge that by the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
When the Nabi comes, Yawm al Qiyam, and he complains, Oh my Lord, my people have abandoned the Quran. That's one of the abandonments of the Quran. When you say to a person, this is not permissible because Allah said many things like what he said to the Muslim woman Muslim woman stay in your homes and don't make the display like the display of the times of a jahiliyyah that's what Allah said so that's how I believe this is not permiss permissible so when you give that as a delil one of the many delils the Muslim comes and says about that statement, hey, that's for the old times. That's backwards. That's for the old times. And that's what the Kuffar of Quraysh used to say when they used to hear the Quran. They were hear the Quran being recited. And after getting up, they would say, those are stories of the ancients. Those stories that we hear Muhammad reading in Surah Hud and those other ayat talking about the prophets and the messages of the past, they said those are stories of the ancients. So Allah and his messenger made this issue clear. Then someone comes with a slick motto and a slick slogan. Hey, if you Muslims don't come to the table of discussion and you participate in these types of issues, these marches, and these demonstrations. If there's not a Muslim woman at the table speaking, if you're not coming to the table, you're going to be on the menu. Yeah, that's a slick slogan. That's a slick model. It sounds cool, but I have to judge that statement with the book of Allah. And it doesn't make a difference how slick it is. It doesn't make a difference who came up with it. Doesn't make a difference how it rings and resonates in the ears of people. We have to judge issues by the book of Allah. Not by your culture, not by your color, not by your madhat, not by what your country is doing. We have to judge it by the book of Allah. If not, the Prophet is going to complain, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my people have abandoned the Quran. That's one of the many examples with our youth. Social media. Every Amr, Bakr, and Zayn on social media, they have grown up in a culture right now, a generation where the young Muslim thinks it's okay to be liberal. Think what you want to think. Do what you want to do and it's okay. This is not our religion. You have to judge what you're doing, thinking, feeling, saying by the book of Allah. And if people are able to bring you proof and you have nothing else in response except to put your finger in your mouth like an infant who is unable and incapable, then you should readdress your whole iman in the way you're looking at the issue. As for our elders, Hadith wala haraj. Our elders. He is the eldest son. When the mother or the father dies and the inheritance takes place, because he's the eldest and he took care of the family, he takes everybody's inheritance and he does with it what he wants to do. And that's not what the Quran said. The Quran said that his siblings have a right to that money as well. Although he's the eldest, although he did what he did while they helped them to grow up, their wealth is not his wealth. Unless they gave it to him in good cheer. Our elders, they come to the table. Their children have more knowledge than them. The younger people around them have more knowledge than them. The youngsters around them, they know what they want and do what they don't want. They don't want to be married, forcibly married. But the elders think by the strength of them being older, they can do whatever they want to do. Part of the Prophet complaining, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yawm al-qiyamah, to Allah Azza wa about the abandonment of the Qur'an. If they believed in the Qur'an, they would have used it more for their problems, mental problems, for their physical ailments and their problems. But they never did it, and they never do it. So it's a delil that the Qur'an, which is the single everlasting mu'jiz of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no one here is going to see a mu'jiz of the Prophet wasallam, other than the book that he brought, which is the Quran. Those other mu'jizat, they were for a different era. No one's going to see that, experience that. We'll only read about it and try to theorize how was it. As for the Quran, the greatest miracle, there it is right there. There it is right there. It's in your pocket and your smartphone. It's at home. He will complain, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Ta'ala mentioned ayat in the Quran, ikhwani, fa'intana za'atum fi shay'in, faruddu'hu ilallahi wa rasul. 
إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ذلك خير وأحسن تأويلا أي مسلمز we as human beings are going to misunderstand each other that's natural anyone who thinks having misunderstandings is inherently wrong there's something wrong with you we're going to disagree with each other in this masjid right here our families we're going to disagree that is natural everyone is not thinking the same everyone is not on the same level he mentions subhanahu wa ta'ala walaw sha'a rabbuka لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا وَلَا يَزَالُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكَ لِذَلِكَ خَلَقُهُ If your Lord had chosen, He would have made all of Benny Adam, all of the people, one group of people on the same thing. He said, but they would not cease to have ikhtilaf and differences amongst themselves, except the ones that Allah had rahma for, and for that reason, they were created. They were created to have ikhtilaf. So when we have ikhtilaf and misunderstandings, we are allowed to avoid each other for three days. We are allowed. Allah knows us. Don't try to force me to smile at someone who I had some beef with, depending upon the level of the beef and the kind. Of, don't try to force me, because it ain't in my heart. I have three days to go away, get myself together. After that three days, the book of Allah said, I got to make peace. But I am allowed that time, that span. So the issue is, we have a system in our religion. How do we deal with issues of differences? At the top of the list, the very first step is that the person has to be willing. Judge your issue by the kitab and the sunnah. Here we are, 10 years down the line, and we're still hating people from our relatives, still hating each other. People who claim they're on Islam and the sunnah. One group says he's on the sunnah, Another group says he's on the same Sunnah and the same Minhaj. 15, 20 years, and they're still at odds. What about the people who are not claiming they're on the Sunnah? What about the people who are not practicing the religion? This is what happened to Beni Israel. 15 years, and he doesn't have the ability to come to his brother and say, let's solve this problem. Wallahi, the problem is not the Quran. Wallahi, the problem is not the Prophet ﷺ didn't bring the system, the Navam, and the Jawab. That's not the issue. The issue are the people. The issue is us and the issues with the problems of our heart. Alam tara ila ladhina yaz'umuna annahum amanu bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik yuridun an yatahakamu ila attaagot wa qad umiru an yakfiru bih ويريد الشيطان أن يضلهم ضلالا بعيدا وإذا قيل لهم تعالوا إلى ما أنزل الله وإلى الرسول رأيت المنافقين يصدون عنك صدودا Listen to this ayat and look at the culture that we live in يا محمد Have you not seen those individuals from your ummah the munafiqin Have you not seen those people from Ahlul Kitab the Yahud Have you not seen those who claim they believe in what was revealed to you and what was revealed before you and they want to make judgments not to the book of Allah but to the Taagut and they've been ordered turn away from the Taagut and disbelieve in the Taagut and Shaitan wants to lead them far far astray and if it is said to one of them come 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 to the book of Allah you got a problem Come to the book of Allah. You have a different opinion? Come to the book of Allah. And come to what was revealed to the Nabi. Allah said, you will see those people turning away from you. Ya Muhammad. Like the Kufad Quraysh. That ayat, Rabbi. Inna qawmi takhidu adha al-Qur'ana mahjura. This ayat is talking about the Kufad Quraysh. When the Prophet used to read the Qur'an, they used to respond with a lot of things. They used to make istihza. They used to try to make fun. Ayyukum qalu. They would say things like, Mada qala anifan. Did you hear what he just said? What, what are you talking about? They would listen to the Quran. They would get up and say, Did, did you hear what he said? What are you talking about? Some of them, they would make noise. Wa qala ladina kafaru la tasmuru li hadha al Quran wa al ghawfi la alakum taghli bur. He would read the Quran to them and they wouldn't listen. They would start making noise to compete with him. They had different responses. They would make i'rad. They would turn their backs to the Quran. The ayat that I just mentioned says, 
When it is said to them, come to what Allah revealed in the Quran, the Rasul, you'll watch the munafiqeen are giving you their backs and walking away. He doesn't want to do that. So the point is, look at the culture. Look at the culture, ikhwani. Look at the culture. The Quran and the Sunnah, when a man gets divorced from his wife, everything is laid out. The Quran and the Sunnah as it relates to women and women's right and women's liberation. It is laid out, clear, perfect. We don't need to come together with some people at their table and just throw ourselves in the swimming pool and just start swimming with those people. In America, one of the ways of protesting is at the big sporting events, baseball, basketball, football, at the big sporting events, if you want to protest, go out on the pitch without your clothes on and streak and just run and run away from the police. And then when you get caught, you tell the people what your issue is. Or while you're running naked like that, run around with a flag and then you let the people see. You brought the whole attention to the world of the world to your issue. So, as a Muslim, am I like, allowed to do that? In today's culture, now you're allowed. Do whatever you want to do because these are the asalib and the methods and the ways that the people are doing. So just do it. So I don't think there's anyone out there, no matter how much deen he has or he doesn't have. I don't think there's any Muslim man or woman out there that his mind would allow him to say, yeah, I endorse that. That's okay. Streaking to bring attention to my issue. Okay. In our religion, we have hadood. No, the woman can't get up in front of the public and start talking like that. That's not from our religion, and that's not the statements of the people of the past. The Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ikhwani, is going to come yawm al-qiyamah, and he's going to complain to Allah Azza wa Jal. He's going to complain about the condition and the relationship that his ummah has as it relates to the book of Allah. So in this first khutbah, 2017, the Gregorian 2017, this new year that we have to pay attention to, we're forced to pay attention to it, I say, the book of Allah, it is the rope of Allah that extends from the heavens to the earth. It is the rope of Allah that will help us with our issues, your own personal issues when the darkness falls on you and you feel lonely and isolated. In your own mind, you are waging war. In your own mind with demons and shayateen. You're not alone. You have the book of Allah. And that may be an extreme and unimaginable for some of you, but it's the reality of people. People we know. It's the reality for some of us. So your reality may not be that serious and that severe, but you have other issues. You're a person who's jealous. You're a person who's a hater. You're a person who's negative. You're a person who's greedy. You're a person who's arrogant. You're a person who's problematic. Whatever the issue is. You see those brothers standing back there on that wall? I don't want to excuse, exclude them. I say from the beginning row to the last row of people sitting down. Everybody got issues. And the people who came in late standing up. Everybody here has issues. You want to solve the problem? The Quran, the book of Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nas'alallah ta'ala السداد والتوفيق الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله إخواني abandon the book of Allah means a lot of things it means not reading the Quran except for the munasabat occasions that come like when dead people die we start reading surat yasin but other than that, we don't do it. Or we wait for the month of Ramadan. Or some of the people who are better than most, he waits for Friday just to read Surah Al-Kaf, which is better than nothing at all. All of that is better than nothing at all other than the innovation of reading for dead people and crazy bid'ah that we've introduced. But the ayat of the Quran in Surah Al-Hadid puts forth the question, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَإِنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Hasn't the time come for those who truly believe for their hearts to start become fearful of Allah as a result of his dhikr and what he revealed from the truth? Don't wait for someone, for someone to die. Don't wait for next Friday. Don't wait for anything. Reconnect yourself to the book of Allah right now by just doing what you have the ability to do. But don't let days and months go by without you being a person who reads the Quran. What's your religion, Ya Abdullah? I'm a Muslim, mashallah. And the non-Muslim, he looks at you a certain way, mashallah. He's a Muslim. 
but he doesn't know. Part of being a Muslim, it means you got to read the Quran. I'm a Muslim, and I'm proud to be a Muslim, but I have no portion of reciting the book of Allah. What kind of Muslim are you? I don't say he's a non-Muslim. I'm saying, what kind of Muslim are you? So the call here, the plan here, the objective here is to encourage everybody. Don't go overboard. Just do what you have the ability to do. Read the book of Allah. And those who don't have the ability to read, for whatever reason, I can't read. I'm a non-Arab. Whatever reason, he can't read it. Then at least listen to the Quran. It has benefit. The Quran, when it was heard by the jinn, they accepted al-Islam. When the Quran was heard by some of the non-Muslims of Quraysh, they accepted Islam. Allah said in the Quran, when those people from the Christians, especially their priests, when they hear, when they listen to what was revealed, they, you will see tears coming from their eyes because of they, what they recognize from the truth. When the people used to hear the Quran, the malaika, when the Quran was being recited, the malaika come down in order to do what? They don't come down because of the high level of iman of the people. They come down in order to listen to the Quran. When the Quran is being recited by any Amr, Bakr, and Zayd, anyone, Prophet Muhammad said there's an angel that comes to your back. If you continue to recite, he comes around and he puts his lips, his mouth on your mouth. Your recitation goes into his jof, into his mind, in order to make a tabarruk from the Quran. But today's culture, the liberal way, the person say, those are stories of the people of the past. Wait a minute, it could have a middle, they have a mouth. What are you talking about? The one with Iman is part of what we believe as it relates to the Malaika, Ummat al Islam. The Quran, the Quran. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make it easy for us to read the Book of Allah, to listen to the Book of Allah, to love the Book of Allah, to put it over all else. We ask Allah to make us those people giving the siha to the Book of Allah, meaning having ikhlas in the Book of Allah, and not to make us of those people like Abu Lahab and Jahl, Abu Jahl, who turned away from the Book of Allah and they opposed the Quran made noise over the Quran. When it was read, they didn't respect it. didn't mean anything to them. They chose everything other than the Quran to be listened to instead of the book of Allah. I'm not telling anyone here, go overboard and read the Quran all day long. And when people come to visit you, you say, no, no, I can't talk to you. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, make a portion of your day that you've been given. A portion of your day that you're going to re-engage yourself with the kalam of Allah in his book. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم أقم الصلاة يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استووا اعتدلوا التراسوا ولا تختلفوا فتختلف قلوبكم وسدوا الخلل إن تصوية الصف من إقام الصلاة لتصون صفوفكم أو يخالفن الله بين قلوبكم لينوا بين أيدي أخوانكم أقيموا الصفوف الأول في الأول Sisters, your feet, your feet, shoulder, shoulder. Everybody, get in the lines. Make sure the lines are perfect. They're straight. Stow I tell you, Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. 
مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يخشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طهاها ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها كذبت ثمود بتغواها إذا بعث أشقاها إذا بعث إذا بعث أشقاها فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقياها فكذبوه فعقروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يخاف أقباها الله أكبر سبحان الله سمع الله لمن حمده حمد كثير طيبا مباركا فيه الله اكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يستر الناس أشتاتا ليعوا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله أكبر سبحان الله سمي الله لمن حمده الحمد كثيرا طيبا مباركا الله أكبر الله أكبر
Allahu Akbar. الله أكبر التيات لله وصلى طيبات وصلى السلام عليكم وعلى شهد أن لا إله إلا الله اللهم بارك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر أغفر الله أستغفر الله اللهم أنت السلام Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Just a few announcements. Today's evening lecture is entitled Virtues of Sham and will be delivered by Sheikh Abu Usama. The lecture will take place after Salat al Isha. This Saturday's lecture after Isha is entitled Allah the Most Merciful and will be delivered by Sheikh Wasim Kemsen. This Sunday we have a very important seminar entitled Alumul Quran, an introduction to the sciences of the Quran and will be delivered by Dr. Ahsan Hanif. Please try your best to attend and please spread the word. The seminar will take place from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. Islamwise weekly class for reverts will take place today at 6 p.m. in the men's partition area. Sisters entrance through door G and brothers from the main hall. The monthly gathering for reverts Revert brothers and sisters will take place this Sunday after Zohar. Our food bank service urgently requires food donations. Please leave your donation during office hours at the Masjid reception via door C. And finally, please donate generously on your way out. Jazakumullah khair.